Hey guys, I just wanted to do a follow-up slash full review on the Finch knife Runtley. So it's kind of ironic, right? Um, I've had this knife out of the, all the Finches. This is the one I've had the least amount of time. Um, I've had the Holiday 1929 Cimarron and Tycoon of the longest, but those are all loaned out at the moment. <laughs> so I sent my Holiday and my Cimarron to uh, Kyle, DTOM Knives and Gear. Check his channel out to check those out. Um, we have our live stream on the edge coming up Saturday night at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern. We're shooting for and uh, special guest Jake from Beer to Gear will be on this week. Uh, we have some giveaways. It's going to be fun, guys. So... Um, Check it out if you can. But he's checking those out. Um, I sent my Tycoona to Grady's Gear. Uh, check out Chris's channel, Grady's Gear. A uh, very new channel to YouTube, but he's a really cool dude. He does uh, the tabletop style. He's got a good take on things. I just like the guy a lot. So check out Grady's Gear. Um, and then my 1929 is loaned out to the Knife Whisperer, a.k.a. Knife Liquor, a.k.a. Joe. So uh, those are all loaned out, and I am left with the Runtley of the Finch's Nest, okay? So I wanted to wrap this one up, um, and then I think when the others come back, I'll probably do like a Finch's Nest type video instead of a full review of each, because... When I did my first impressions on those, I went pretty in-depth, and I think that pretty much covered it, and I don't want to beat a dead horse. Um, so, anyway, the Finch Knife, Finch Knife Co. Runtley. Um, this was a gift from Spencer over at Finch Knife Co. Uh, he sent me the Cimarron, which is right here. He sent me this one to give away. For my 500 sub giveaway, which is currently going on. Which, guys, are you kidding me? I'm already at like 620. <laughs> I love you guys so much. Um, but, and he included this because he knew it was the last one I needed to complete the Finch's Nest. And that's just the kind of guy Spencer is. I, I rant and rave about him all the time. Love Finch Knife Co. So, um, yeah, that's how I got it. This is the black version in 154 cm. You'll see here 154 cm Runtley, and it is a Finch knife. And this is the first in the line. Uh, it is designed after a fishing lure, so it's supposed to be inspired by a fishing lure. I, I don't know much about fishing, so I can't talk to that. But it has this really sweet. Warren Cliff Cleaver uh, Blade Modified Cliffy Warney thing. Um, has this nail nick, which surprisingly, you look at it and you're like, oh, it's a nail nick. Um, yeah, but when you go to deploy the knife, you can uh, put your finger in there and do the spidey flick. So I don't know if they knew that, but genius. Um, really cool blade. Has this, um, is this a hollow grind? I think it's a flat grind, but it just kind of looks like a hollow grind. I suck at that, guys. I know. It could be a saber grind. Um, you tell me. You can see it, right? It definitely doesn't, like, cave in much like a hollow grind does. Uh, so I think it's just a flat grind. And it goes about three quarters down the blade, right? Um, but it's very slicey because of that. It gets very thin behind the edge because if you're looking at the stock, it's not very thick to begin with. And then you have this tall blade here. Um, and it just comes down to a very nice point here, which is very, very good for getting into like packaging and stuff. You can just drop the tip in. That's what she said. And you just cut back, right? Kind of like that primary tip on a, uh, or secondary tip on a Tanto that I talk about sometimes. It's a very good for package opening, letter opening, that kind of stuff. Um, this is a very small knife. Um, I mean, if I compare it to a bug out, here's my bug out. You can see here, uh, it is much, much smaller than a bug out. And if I show you in the closed position, 
here it is next to the bug out. Just a very small knife and much thicker. So you can see how much thicker it is than a bug out as well. I don't know if that helps at all. Beep. There we go. So just an interesting uh, design, size, and everything. For me personally, it's too small. I have not carried it much just because of that fact. It's just a bit small for my hands, and then it's a bit chubby for my liking. Um, but I really like the design, and if you like that kind of knife, or if you want like a little exacto blade, I mean, this thing is perfect for that. But me being 100% honest, it's a little too small for me. Um, so that is kind of the overall knife there. Um, the blade, and then you have this G10 handle, uh, titanium milled pocket clip, which is very well done. This uh, Finch loom on the front, which will glow in the dark if you charge it. You have to charge it. That's kind of the difference between glow in the dark and loom. I don't know. I'm an idiot. But you have to charge it, okay? Um, let's talk about ergonomics. I mentioned it was small, right? So if I choke back to here, it's neutral, so it's you know it's comfortable. But I can't I can't even get that fourth finger on. Basically, it, it hangs off, right? Um, but I can choke up on this classic Finch kind of what I call the flipper choil, um, and then I can get all four fingers on actually. And it's not uncomfortable at all. And I can get my thumb up here for some control. And you could use this like a little razor blade. I'm telling you. I mean, it's phenomenal for that kind of work. Um, I just find it a little thick for my liking. It's not really the small size. Um, and also when I play with it. So let's get into action. We talked about ergos and aesthetics. It's a little small. So I, I've had occasions where flipping it and stuff. I've gotten like the meat of my my palm or something like caught in there i've never cut myself but i've like felt it like the blade knock off of stuff and um you know maybe my hands are just a little too chubby for this guy i don't know um but the action is actually really good if you look go to the break do my kind of test there um it flies out it locks up it's on bearings i took this apart i think in a video as well um, it's on these micro bearings. I mean, it's just really good action for a tiny knife, right? I mean, look at this. Just fun to play with and fidget with. Um, yeah, so action-wise, it's definitely good. Uh, then that gets us into cutting, and we talked about that already. Basically, it's a little exacto knife. It slices through paper, packaging, uh, all types of things very, very well. But you don't have a ton of blade length, right? I mean, maybe two and a half inches. I can't really tell you. Uh, but yeah, I'd probably say two and a half. I have a Spyderco Chaparral here. Compare it if that helps anybody. So... That's what you're talking about there. Uh, I've mentioned I love the Chaparral. Uh, it's just one of those quirky knives that like you wouldn't think you'd love, but you love. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so that gets us into, uh, I guess, value, guys. So, you know, these knives go for about 120 130 bucks, I think, right? Um, and you get G10, 154 CM. You get it made by Best Tech, so you get a good OEM. You get very, very good action. You get an awesome American company, an American story, an inspiration behind the knife. Uh, you also have to remember this is the launch product. So this is the first knife they came out with. Um, you know, I, I do think that maybe the price is a little bit high for that. Um, I would probably love this knife a little bit more if it was in the one, you know, 110 range maybe. Uh, but they did upgrade you on the steel. It used to come with N690. Now it's 154 CM, which is objectively better in my opinion. Um, and of course I didn't pay for this, so I'm not going to sit here and tell you spending your money on this is, you know, cause I didn't, you know, I'm being honest here. Um, 
But I think that I would spend 120 bucks on this for sure. If I wanted one, uh, if this size of a knife was good for me, if I wanted a little razor blade like that, uh, or if I was into fishing and the story really caught me, like, we're not talking about a boatload of money here, guys. Like, yeah, it's not a budget knife, but it's just above that, in my opinion. So, uh, I don't know. Value-wise, it's kind of subjective. You decide. But if you like the look of this knife, I say go for it. Um, so that drives us into recommendations, right? Uh, if you're left-handed, yes, there's no reversible clip. And it's a righty liner lock, but it's a liner lock. So you have no pressure issues on a small knife like this. Um, it operates very well for a lefty. I have no issues there. So um, it's just up to you whether you'll carry a, a right-handed knife, right? Um, and then right-handed, I mean, again, if you're into a smaller knife like this, this thing is phenomenal, guys. The action, the build quality, all of that is up to par. So I can recommend this knife to anyone. Uh, and I just love Finch Knife Co. So that makes it easier for me. So uh, my kid is crying there. I'm going to have to go take care of her, guys. Um, I'm going to leave you with that. I love Finch Knives. The Runtley is cool. If you want one, get one. So uh, have a great evening. And I will catch you later.